All right, guys, so let's go over the film strip. So we've previously talked about the film strip is basically our, our way of quickly navigating between images. Um, we can double click on things on the film strip, images on the film strip to be able to see in the, in the loop view. And we can also double click on the image itself to take us back to grid view again. Um, again, we have it set up right now to mouse over is going to show in navigator. There's actually a quick shortcut to turn this on or off without having to go into your preferences. You can just right click hit view options and right here it'll say show photos in navigator on mouse over so if you turn that off then it's no longer going to show the image that you're mousing over in your navigator window okay so that's one easy way to do that if you don't like that feature you can also do it from the preferences like we taught you before as well uh, the other things I want to show you guys is the different view options for different information that we're seeing. Now I like to have all these selected, but if you don't want to see certain items, you don't have to show it. So you can click on uh, show ratings and picks to remove it, show badges to remove it, show stack counts to remove it, and we'll talk about what each one of these are more in uh, the, uh, the next video or the next chapter actually. Um, but yeah, you can control what you're viewing there. We also have other information like when we right click on the image, um, like deleting the photo, exporting it, um, the metadata options. A lot of these we've previously gone over, um, but just know that it's, it's basically the, essentially the same thing you're going to see if you right click on an image in the actual uh, workspace right here as well. It'll be very similar. The view option and stuff might be a little bit different. Some of the things are going to be a little bit different. All right, so that's basically the, the base of our film strip. Again, we can control the size of it like we do every other window by just finding that edge and clicking and dragging. Now let's go up to the left and the top side of the film strip. And we're going to see right here, this is the dual monitor support for Lightroom. Right now we currently have one monitor selected. If I click that, it shows that I'm in the grid view under uh, the, the main window. It shows that I'm in full screen mode. Again, we talked about, uh, or we're in normal screen mode, sorry. We talked about how to switch different screen modes previously by hitting F. And F will actually alternate through the different full screen modes. And if I click F, I clicked F twice now. So if I click here, it'll show now I'm on full screen. So if I click F again, it'll bring me back to normal screen mode. Um, again, it shows you your loop, your compare, and it shows you the, the shortcuts on each of these two, which is kind of nice if you forget. Now let's activate our dual monitor action. So we're going to click here on the number two, and it's going to automatically bring up my second monitor off to the right side. And this works a couple different ways. I want you guys to right click on this, and we can see a few different options. So to actually show this screen, we can use the hotkey F11, or we can simply click like we did down on this icon right here. So F11 will toggle the secondary screen. If we want it to be full screen, we can alternate between full screen and shrunk view. Let me show you what that view looks like um, with shift plus F11. Okay. So I like it full screen. I'm going to bring it back to full screen right there. Now if I right click again here, I can see that I can alternate between the different view modes just like I would in my main window. But to do that, and I can actually use the hotkeys too for it, and the only difference is on this side is I'm going to, I'm going to use shift with the same hotkey that I would use in the main window. So if I want to switch to grid mode, I would do shift plus G. And there we go, we have the grid mode. If I want to go to loop view, I would go shift plus E. Okay. Whereas if I hit G alone, it takes me to the grid view in my main window, not in my secondary. All right, and again, if you right click there, you can see all those shortcuts again right here. All right, so now let's go over our different view modes. And we have the different we have three different view modes at the top right, normal, live, and locked. Now each one of these is going to do something different. Under normal, it's only going to display the image in the secondary window that I have selected in the film strip. Under live, it's going to act kind of like how the navigator does, where it'll show any image that I'm mousing over. Now this can be a little bit like schizophrenic if you're mousing over a ton of images at a time. Don't want anybody to have like an epileptic seizure or something. So uh, I don't really like that feature personally. I usually leave it on normal. Locked is going to actually lock it to a single image. So now I can use, like let's say I want to, uh, if I have two monitors side by side, I can compare these full screen on both monitors. Um, and this will stay locked if I want to compare with a different image. So it's not going to change. Okay, so I usually leave it in normal mode, it's probably most useful. The nice thing about this is I can have, like let's say I can work on the grid side over here, and I can switch to the compare view by hitting shift plus C on the right side, and I can select my two images and sit there and compare on my huge large screen on the right side. Same with, I can, I can do the same thing with survey, select multiple images by holding control and clicking them, and I can click multiple image, uh, compare multiple images. Now. Uh, again, you probably would be comparing images that are similar, not completely different in these view modes. But that's what you have as far as the options go. All right, now the last option we have is the slideshow option, which will actually play the slideshow on this right side of the screen. Now you can get to the slideshow easily by hitting Alt, Control, Shift, and Enter. 
and it'll automatically enter to slideshow mode. If I hit it again, it's actually going to turn on, turn off the secondary display. So I'm going to hit Alt, Control, Shift, and Enter. And by the way, I hope you guys know that I'm not going over the Mac keys, uh, shortcut keys, because it's pretty simple. Um, I think we posted earlier on in the tutorial series that anytime we mention Control, you guys are just replacing it with Command. Anytime we mention Alt, you guys are just replacing it with Option. So I, I don't want to repeat every single shortcut in both versions, because I know you guys are smart out there, so I don't think it's necessary. So we switch to slideshow mode. I'm going to hit play. If it hasn't already rendered the previews, then it's going to render the previews. It'll take maybe a minute or two to render those previews, and then it's going to play a slideshow off on the right side like it's doing right now. And again, with your slideshow, it's going to use your slideshow settings to play that. So right now it's using whatever slideshow settings are defaulted to, to play this slideshow. All right, so I'm going to escape out of that. And that is our dual monitor view. So now let's go to the next icon that we have on this on the top of our uh, film strip here, which is it's just the grid view uh, icon right here. And if you click that, it's just going to switch to grid view. So if I was in loop and I clicked right here, it's, it'll switch me back to uh, grid view. Um, this is your go back and your go forward buttons. I pretty much never use these buttons, so it's up to you guys if you guys actually use them. But it basically just goes back between the previous and and I think it goes back to the previous view versus the the forward view. Um, next is this folder preview right here. It's actually telling us where the image is that we're selecting right now. So it will tell you the image name of it. Um, now if I click right here on the arrow, it'll show me a list of recent sources. So if I want to switch to a different source, I can quickly switch right there. Um, again, it's something that you guys can use. <laughs> All these things they serve multiple purposes, so it's up to you guys how you guys want to use them. On the right side, I have a what I call kind of a quick filter option. So on the right side, I have a few different options of quickly filtering my images, um, just without having to go to the actual filter, uh, the actual light, Lightroom filters. So let's say I have, I'm going to apply some different options to these. So I'm going to flag these by hitting P. Okay, I'm going to add a few more stars to some different images. Now in the filters, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Show Flagged. So I'm going to click this button right here, it's going to show all the images that are flagged. And now we have the three images that I just flagged. If I click the next one, it's going to show all the images that have no flag. So it shows all unflagged images. If I click the next one, it's going to show all rejected photos, which you reject by hitting X. But we haven't rejected any photos, so it doesn't show anything. Next we have our star filters. Now if I, this kind of has a few different functions. So if I click this uh, right here on this operator, It'll say rating is equal to, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. That's really important because it's it's going to operate differently in each one. If I say equal to and then I click five stars, it's only going to show five stars. But if I say less than or equal to five stars, then it shows everything because everything is less than or equal to five stars. If I show less than or equal to four stars, then those five star ones are automatically kicked out. And if I show greater than or equal to four stars, it'll only show the five star images that we just selected right there. Okay, so click that again to turn it off. And then right here we have color filters. So we applied, a, I think, a red filter to a couple photos by hitting six. The color filters are six, seven, eight, nine on your on your keypad. Uh, so if I click red, it'll show me that one red photo that was labeled red. If I click it again, it'll turn it off. Now on the right side, a lot of this is basically the same as what we just picked over here. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into this, but you can basically pick from here. You can go flagged. You can choose rated. It's the same thing as clicking flagged on this side. Uh, if I click rated, it's the same thing as clicking over here, except I have actually more control if I use this little area here because I can actually set an operator and then choose how many stars. We're going to actually use the, the true Lightroom filters, uh, and I'll show you guys how to do that in the next video. Um, we won't go into depth. In the next video we will go into depth when we actually get to that point in our workflow but uh, it's a really powerful system. By the way, these little switches on the right of some of these areas are going to turn off uh, that function. So if I click right here, it's going to turn off the filters. Same as if I clicked filters off right here. So again, you can kind of see how there's a million ways to do the same thing in Lightroom. All right, guys, so let's go on to the next video where we're going to discuss getting to the toolbar as well as to the filters.